Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Kutzkazart video, which it's been a little while since I've done a reaction to one, but yeah, um, how to win an interstellar war. Not interplanetary, interstellar. Which, I mean, it's always good to know this sort of stuff. You never know when you might need it in the future. But yeah, so, if I remember correctly, I think, like, the little I know of, like, theoretical interplanetary war, it would be just a lot of hurling missiles and other projectiles towards, you know, other planets. <laughs> in like Because, you know, it's kind of hard for a planet to dodge. And of course, unless you have, like, some form of FTL, I mean, interstellar conflicts, they could go on for a long time simply because of the, you know, the amount of time it would actually take for whatever you're shooting at them to, you know, get to the place you're firing at. <laughs> So yeah, I very much, you know, look forward to their input and, you know, actually learn more about the subject or, you know, the, the theory, because, you know, we're, I, I, you know, I very much hope that we as a species are pretty far from interstellar war. But yeah, with all that out of the way, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the Day, and with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Could aliens destroy us from light years away? Yes. Hmm. Another day at the Kurzgesagt Labs, where we answer the most important questions with science. Today, how many civilizations science. wage war across light years? What kind of devastating weapons could they use? And what would they look like? Meet our two players, a yellow dwarf star system home to a species of primates. Oh. Humans, as they call themselves, recently became a technological civilization. They have rockets, nuclear reactors, and memes. How okay. cute. The Scorpions disagree. They reside on a planet around the orange dwarf star HD 40307, 42 light years away. The Scorpion civilization developed earlier than humans, and they have much better technology. They've recently built a Dyson Swarm around their star, which gives them near limitless energy. And they noticed humanity which is unfortunate as the Scorpions are planning a hyperspace bypass through our solar system. Of course so they are! they decided that humanity has to go. Interstellar war is hard though. Front lines, tactics and logistics are meaningless at these scales. Yeah! It's also fought across time. Decades will pass between firing a weapon and learning whether it hit or not. Sending an invasion fleet is futile. Even if the Scorpions travel at a large fraction of the speed of light, the journey to Earth would take decades or even centuries, and humans would have plenty of time to prepare. Duck if you want to know more about the mind-numbing problem of war between alien civilizations, we made a video about it. Yeah. Today, we'll help the Scorpions construct a weapon that is not only extremely long-range and as fast as physically possible, but that will totally destroy everything on Earth, so no human survivors will come to enact vengeance on Smorp in the future. Oh, okay, so this... So, like, this is, like, completely hypothetical, then. So they're gonna do... Are they? I mean, are they gonna do, like, something similar to that one hypothetical, like, machine they suggested before where it's, uh... It's like some sort of, like, rocket booster you could attach to, like, a star or something? It's been a while since I saw that video. In Interstellar War, you want to win with one shot. Our bird scientists have found three Scorpion designs. The Star Laser, okay. the Relativistic Missile, and the Ultra Relativistic Electron Beam. Okay. All based on real technologies that humans are using in some form already. Let's see how they work. The Star Laser. Star As laser. an advanced technological civilization, the Scorpions harness the energy of their star by surrounding it with billions of solar power satellites. This Dyson Swarm collects 1% of the star's energy output, a million, billion, billion watts. 50 billion times more than all humanity generates. That's a lot of power. What if all the power of the Dyson Swarm, all those satellites, were used to create a star laser? Like any laser, the bigger it is, the longer its range. Human-built lasers use small mirrors to focus, so they have short ranges. The Scorpions could turn their entire Dyson Swarm into a collective focusing element a million kilometers wide. The star laser has an insane range as a result. Yeah, one to would focus think. on target Earth from a distance of over two million light years. Okay, let's shoot it. Countless tiny beams combine into a single huge beam. Laser beams are normally invisible in space, but the star laser is so powerful 
that light you would actually be able to see dust it. and gas in its path makes it clearly visible in the sky. A gigantic column of green light. The laser travels at the speed of light, which oddly enough is still pretty slow on a galactic level. So it would so if they're 42 light years away, it would still take 42 years before the laser would even uh, like come to Earth. Yeah, of course. But yeah, okay, so the thing is like this it's actually it's reminding me of a couple of like the giga structures from the Stellaris mod Giga Structural Engineering. One that I remember was the Penrose sphere. Basically, they, they've talked about it on here before, but basically think of it almost like similar to like a Dyson sphere, uh, but you put it around a black hole to collect energy. Um, and then there's the possibility of when you buy, uh, build a Dyson sphere, or not Dyson sphere, the Penrose sphere, that you can either just collect energy off it like normal, or you can set it off to be a bomb and blow up the entire system, which that's fun. There's another one though that this is much more endgame. Uh, that's called the what's it called? The quasi stellar obliterator. That's it. That's a long name. But yeah, basically, it's a structure you can build or can you find. I forget. Wait, can you actually build it or do you find it? It's been a while since I've done it. But either way, uh, basically, it's a uh, it's a machine that you build around the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy, and you use it to you know shoot a beam that can just destroy entire star systems in a single shot so some, something similar like this only it's much more instant wait wait i think it does have a charge time it, never mind let's let's get back to the actual video with the actual science then shall we it takes a whole day until the laser has left the scorpion system shooting into the emptiness between stars it will travel for decades occasionally melting the odd bit of interstellar dust or asteroid. Slave one. 42 years after being fired, it arrives without warning. Humans only notice a weird green glow in the sky, and then they're gone. 1% of the energy of a star concentrated into a beam the diameter of Earth, traveling 42 light years. It burns the exposed half of the planet with the intensity of 3 million suns. The seas boil and evaporate, fires scour the land, and within minutes, Earth's crust begins to melt into a sea of lava. As the planet rotates, yeah. it turns into a red-hot hell with no trace of life. After a day, it's all over, and the laser dies down. In another 42 years, the Smorpions will know if they've been successful. You know, I, I, I granted, I know on like the, um, the time scale of the universe, like 84 Earth years is like nothing. But the fact that you'd have to wait several decades, like, not even several decades, like a century for the, for this one singular option to figure, to find out whether your attack even succeeded. I mean, you better hope that your civilization has some form of life extending, like, uh, technology. Otherwise that would just kind of suck. It's like all of a sudden you get this new person that has no idea what uh, what was happening? This is this huge stack of paperwork on our desk saying the war is won. It's like, wait, what war? We were at war with who? Doesn't matter. They're gone now. What? <laughs> That's another thing about interstellar war. When you attack, your grandchildren will be the ones to find out if you won. It's like all the bombs from World War II exploding in the 80s and us only seeing the effect today. Okay, that would suck. The star laser's extreme range, speed of light attack, and ability to melt down any target make it a premier interstellar weapon. But is there something else? Maybe something that wouldn't take like literal, like a literal century to get to us. And granted, I wish we had it and not them, but... Missile. Well, what if, if instead of converting the energy of their Dyson Swarm into a laser, the Scorpions used it to shoot a super bullet? A relativistic missile going as close to the speed of light as possible. This sort of weapon is at the limits of what the Smorpion's technology can handle, as it requires loads of a highly dangerous material, antimatter. The oh, evil wonderful! Twin of regular matter. Humans have only managed to produce a few nanograms of antimatter. With their unlimited energy, Smorpions can manufacture it at an industrial scale to build antimatter rockets. When antimatter and matter are mixed, they annihilate, which yeah. in more practical terms means there's a big, big boom releasing gamma rays and plasma. The physics is complicated, but basically, if you have a really strong magnetic field, you can deflect the plasma through a nozzle, just like in the chemical rockets humans use. Okay. But it would be much, much faster. The fastest rocket possibly, basically. Our relativistic missile is much bigger than a skyscraper. Oh! At the bottom is the bell-shaped magnetic nozzle, 100 meters wide. 
On top of it are 250 floors filled with antimatter and matter ready to annihilate each other. On Jeez, oh, I just, you know, again, it's stuff with space. It very, very quickly gets to the point where you get stuff that is just so stupidly big, it gets hard to like really comprehend. Like a, a single, not even a rocket, a single missile that is taller by several magnitudes than the Burj Khalifa. Oh. On the top floor is a 300 kilogram projectile looking quite small, about the size of a person. Sir Isaac Newton is the deadliest son of a bitch in space. So if you have, you know, 300 kilograms traveling at, you know, basically the speed of light, almost, um, you have that hit the earth, earth breaks into, I would almost imagine, not even a powder. I would almost imagine it would just turn molten in liquid. Like, it would just go and then the earth would go and kind of like dissolve or something. To stop them getting damaged on the way, the missiles have dozens of sacrificial layers that form a Whipple shield. Whipple shield, that's sure a word. Their job, the Scorpions build 1,000 missiles. Oh! Let's fire them. Never mind, I thought they were just going to stick with the one. Launching all the relativistic missiles is a spectacular event. For a moment, the antimatter engines lighting up outshine their star. Their exhaust is a long trail of brilliant white, and as they accelerate away, they appear redder and redder until they turn invisible. With the extreme amount of energy released by the matter-antimatter reactions, the missiles are accelerated to 99.9999996% of the speed of light. So they slower have than a laser. Infinite range, as there's nothing really to slow them down. They arrive shortly after you can see them. The light from their launch will take 42 years to reach Earth. So human astronomers might see the flash of the missile's launch, and then a few days later, they'll hit. Not enough time to prepare. Yeah. Each relativistic missile packs the kinetic energy of a dinosaur killer asteroid. So only one needs to hit. They never reach the ground, disintegrating instead at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Intense blue flashes set everything on fire. Then, continent-sized fireballs slam down on the surface to smash everything into dust, repeatedly, until nothing is left but rubble and smoke. So, interstellar missiles with unlimited range, minimal warning, and delivering complete destruction of a planet's surface. Nuts. Yeah. But they are a hassle to build. Yeah, I, I, was gonna, I was just going to say, it's like, oh yeah, it's nice, but unlike the laser where you can just fire it and forget it, um, this has the... Well, the the co the literal cost of actually requiring lots of materials and a very expensive fuel source, and just you know they were talking about how you know one of the byproducts of a matter antimatter um annihilation is you know, all forms of radiation, and if you don't have the you know appropriate forms of shielding, you you'd get cooked by your own uh, rocket's exhaust. Is the thing? Is there something else, maybe? the ultra-relativistic electron beam. Humans do funny things to their food to rid it of bacteria and make it safe to eat, like shooting electron beams at strawberries. Small particle accelerators send electrons into the food with an energy similar to the radiation from nuclear reactions. Not enough to burn the food, but deadly to bacteria. So basically this ultra-relativistic electron beam, its main thing would be to just irradiate the planet and kill all life on it. Yeah, that sounds great. Smorpions had the same idea, but bigger. Big the main strawberry. challenge with an electron beam is range. Electrons are negatively charged particles, so they don't want to stay near each other. Yeah. A regular electron beam will quickly spread out, making it harmless. Smorpions need it to cover distances of dozens of light years. So they've used the rules of the universe to trick the electrons by building an ultra-relativistic electron beam, or UREB. What it does is accelerate the electrons to 99.9999999999999999998% of the speed of light. Okay, and okay, I... And I <laughs> I've heard of electron beam weapons on spaceships before. I'm forgetting the channel of before, but they were talking about like, you know, plausible spaceship weaponry. And the, the thing with this, I'm pretty sure what they're going to say is, you know, it, the whole thing with like traveling faster than the speed of light, you know, time for you uh, compared to the rest of the universe seems to slow down. 
So if you're going at almost the speed of light, time for the electrons will slow down to the point where they won't, the, the actual, the actual like um, time of them spreading apart from their negative charge will be, you know, normal and compared to them, but into the rest of, but compared to the rest of the universe, it'll be very slow just because of how fast they're going. <laughs> Faster than even the most powerful cosmic rays. OMG the particle. closer something travels to the speed of light, the slower time moves for it relative to the rest of the universe. And since these electrons are moving so yep. incredibly fast, for every second of spreading they experience, over five million years pass in real time. A physics trick that lets the beam cross interstellar distances while remaining tightly focused on its target. The biggest particle accelerator on Earth is 27 kilometers long. It's a circle. The Scorpions need one that's over 100,000 kilometers long, a megastructure eight times longer than Earth is wide. It's mostly a tube of magnets holding the beam together until the exit. Mm -hmm. Like a long trumpet of doom surrounded by an aura of deadly radiation. Trumpet of doom, that, I've never heard it described quite like that before. When it's fired, it produces a ruler straight lightning bolt pointed at Earth. Its effects on arrival are less visible than the other weapons. No flashes of light, no massive firestorms, no explosions. It doesn't destroy rocks, it destroys DNA. People get dizzy, then fall sick as their cells are pierced by radiation. You might think that a deep bunker could save a few humans, but no. The That's Europe is so penetrating that its effects accumulate to lethal doses even underground over days or weeks. Yeah, I think something, well, something like this, you basically have to be at the planet's core if you want it to survive for any, you know, pe extended period of time. But even then, I'm pretty sure the electrons will just go right through the planet. In the end, just like our strawberries, Earth becomes sterile. Simulation results. Hmm, another elaborate animated science explainer by Kotzkazat, where we've learned a lot. Not sure exactly what. <laughs> Luckily, the Smorpions don't really exist. But others might. One major downside of all our weapons is that others around the Milky Way could see you firing them, which is not ideal because you don't want to present yourself as a dangerous species and tell everybody where exactly you are. So maybe instead of shouting or shooting out into the universe, the best course of action seems to be to stay relatively quiet for now and observe. The whole dark forest, uh, uh, the whole dark forest um, theory for the Fermi paradox. But yeah, that is. That, that is kind of like the funny part in all of this. You you want to destroy your enemy. Well, enemy, I guess. They just want to destroy us for whatever reason. But then, in them actually creating the weapon and using it would then, you know, jeopardize their entire civilization and possibly lead to the destruction of themselves. Ah. Oh. Maybe one day we'll witness distant stars shooting at each other and be glad we stayed out of it. Ah, uh, so yeah. Oh, interstellar war. Not a nice prospect. I'd much rather it, you know, be similar in the way to Stellaris or other space games like that instead of, you know, firing lasers at each other that, you know, just melt the planet. You know, I do love these videos where they're, just, they're completely hypothetical and just for fun. It just, it even, it goes to show that even with what I think is still our limited understanding of like how the universe truly works that even just with our like bare bones understanding you could create some really weird and nasty stuff so yeah with all that being said original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason corner video will lead to my let's play of the day and with all that out of the way i hope you guys liked if you did leave a like subscribe if you have not and i'll see you guys next time goodbye